The tiny Polots village of Holoku in the Hungarian Nograd County has been a World Heritage Site since 1987. The town's unique and universal significance comes from its success in preserving its 17th to 18th century traditional settlement form. The traditional architecture and the traditional rural lifestyle specific to the pre-agricultural revolution era of the 20th century. The village dates back to the 13th century, when the castle wall was built on Sar Hill after the Mongolian invasion. An ancient legend explains the name Holoku, which means Raven Rock, claiming that devils disguised as ravens built the fortress. In reality, the castle was built by the Elish branch of the Kacic family on a carefully chosen 362-meter-high rocky hill. The Gothic-style castle was rebuilt several times over the centuries, expanding each time. Despite further expansion of the fortress's defensive features during the 15th century, the walls and bastions raised before firearms were widely proved to be outdated and inefficient against the advanced weapons used by the Ottoman army. So, in the summer of 1552, Pasha Ali occupied the fort without any significant resistance. After more than 130 years of war, raids and sieges, the castle was only retaken in 1683 by the troops of the Polish king, John Sobieski. After the Independence War of Rakotsi, portions of the wall were blown up. The 20th century renovation of the fortress took 30 years and was completed in 1996. According to legend, Matej Chak hid his fabulous treasure here. Even the Turks piled up their valuables collected during the raids. But the treasure hunters of later times had to leave empty-handed. The Castle Museum provides insight into the everyday life of the 13th century people who lived here. The Wax Museum portrays the ruler and his family in their contemporary costumes and accessories, and the Hall of Arms houses the weapons of contemporary military forces. The ancient stonework on display bears testament to the renovation of the fortress and the excavated sculptures. Contemporary documents only mention the castle, but say nothing of the village, so all we know of Holoku is that it already had a church in the 14th century. During the Turkish occupation, Holoku, like many other settlements, was abandoned. Subsequently, however, the village was soon repopulated, and the settlement was registered in 1720 as a noble village, which meant that the inhabitants had no tax liability. The settlement burned down several times because houses were made of wood without a foundation, with wooden frames, and were covered with flammable thatched or shingled roofs. The traditional medieval village structure can easily be seen in Holoku. The single long street, bordered by houses situated on narrow lots running off it at right angles. The houses on Koshut and Petofi Street are arranged in a comb-like fashion, giving a unique image to the village. The typical shape of the houses preserves many ancient building elements like the stone plinth, the saddle roof with protruding drain pipes, and an ornate facade wall and the common room kitchen pantry stable layout. Today the settlement has around 400 inhabitants and its historic town center holds 67 protected buildings, 
Most of these are single-story peasant houses whose facade is lined by hambits, porches with balustrades, decorated with openwork carvings. Traditional Polots houses usually consist of three rooms. From the veranda, visitors step onto the porch, which is actually the kitchen. The clean room where the family slept opened from here towards the street. Towards the back was a larder where grains were stored and the older generation slept. In the middle of the settlement, as if on an island, stands the symbol of the village, the St. Martin Church, which, due to its simplicity and degree of preservation, is considered a true gem. The church was built in 1889 from public donations and expanded with the vestry in 2002. The settlement also had a church during medieval times, located outside today's village borders. This church was destroyed during the Ottoman occupation, and the current one was built of clay on a stone foundation in the place of the original one. The church and the characteristic Polot houses surrounding it are the dominant elements of the village, but the old village also has many cultural values to offer besides the wonderful panorama. There's a functional weaving house, a village museum, a postal museum, a doll museum, and a crafts house. Also, many representatives of small manufacturers can be found here, and they can be visited in their workshops. The vast majority of the villagers still practice the old traditions of Holoku, of which the Easter-related are the most renowned. This is one of the most important feasts in the Christian religion, but it also contains many elements of the ancient spring festival. The Easter holiday coincides with the traditional fertility ceremonies at spring equinox as well. On this occasion, all the people, young and old alike, wear their richly decorated folk clothes, thus celebrating the holiday of the purged man and renewed nature. On Sunday, after the outdoor mass in front of the St. Martin Church, the procession begins, proclaiming the resurrection of Christ to the world. In the old days, traditionally this was also the day of the food blessing. People went to the morning mass with covered baskets full of lamb, cakes, eggs, ham, and wine. The Easter lamb symbolizes Jesus' sacrifice, the wine his blood, the eggs his resurrection. On Easter Monday, traditional folk assemblies, dancers and musicians revive the traditional Easter customs and the rich folk beliefs of Palot's land, from egg decoration to the sprinkling of girls with fresh water from the well. This latter custom is based on the belief in the purifying and renewing power of water, which survived until today in the form of sprinkling cologne. It is said that the soldiers guarding the tomb of Christ tried to calm the jubilant women who received the message of his coming resurrection by sprinkling them with water, trying also to silence them from passing on this good news. Another popular custom is the painting and decoration of eggs. According to some, the red color of the Easter eggs symbolizes the blood of Christ, but ancient beliefs already attributed protective powers to this color. Visitors have the chance to see and learn the tips and tricks of basket weaving, lace making, beading, and gingerbread making. The ladies' costumes also gave clues about their marital status. Bonnets were only worn by married women, while girls braided their hair and adorned it with ribbons.
Later, they were only allowed to wear bonnets with multicolored embroidery and darker colors. A traditional women's costume includes a skirt of many colors, under which they wore two underskirts, when working, and up to 20 on festive occasions. On top of the skirt, they tied a richly embroidered apron. Over the white canvas bodice, an also richly embroidered ceremonial outfit, the loibi is worn. And on their feet, women wore black and girls wore red boots. The bead necklace, of which five to six rows were worn occasionally, came into fashion about a century ago. Men's clothing is less decorative. They wear small brimmed black hats on their heads, richly embroidered studded black vests over their white linen shirts, and black leather boots over their tight black pants. Holoku is a slice of history preserved in its original state even today. However, it is not an open-air museum, but a living, populated settlement, with tradition-loving inhabitants who use some of their restored buildings for their originally intended purpose. This makes this small village one of the most valuable cultural treasures of Hungary, 